when it comes to oil and gas. How are yeah. you? So I'm great. Thank you for having me today. Thank um, you. So when it comes to oil and gas in our market, um, I think the biggest part of our market that's going to get hit by that is the second home market at Lake Travis mm -hmm. um, and then up into Horseshoe Bay. Um, in Horseshoe Bay and Lake LBJ, um, that is a very, uh, lots of owners from West Texas are there. Um, and I think that, you know, uh, if it's a second or a third home, um, you know, I, I just don't know if um, it's, it's a want, it's not a need. And um, I think that there probably will be some opportunities there um, on, the, on, the, uh, on the purchase side, um, for sure. Uh, Lake Travis, I, I don't know uh, as much. I mean, I've sold quite a few waterfront houses uh, on Lake Travis in the last 14 years. Um, there's still a lot of, you know, um, people that are affected or that own there that are affected, I think, by this oil and gas uh, crisis that we're having. Um, so I don't know. It's, um, I think we'll see some deals, but um, I, I don't think it's absolute fallout by any means. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I do too. And of course, the sooner we can get the economy back going and the sooner we can get this, um, this virus under control, the better for everyone. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's the real issue. I mean, I'm primarily a listing agent in our market. Um, and, you know, I've got, uh, I mean, I've had several closings already in the last 30 days, but those were all, um, you know, deals that were already in, in escrow. Um, but, you know, I just listed a house in Central Austin that I would have had probably at least 10 offers on if we would have hit the market 60 days ago. Mm -hmm. um, but we hit the market two weeks ago and um, I haven't even had a showing. Yeah. So what are, how are people handling showings in Austin? Are they doing what they're doing in Dallas, which is basically more of a vis video until you can actually get one person in the house? Yeah, so what I'm doing um, on all of my listings that are vacant, um, I'm actually going ahead of whoever's going to show it, um, and I'll turn all the lights on for them. Um, I leave uh, wipes there. I have a can of Lysol as well, and um, I'll open the front door. I'll open the back door so there absolutely doesn't have to be any contact by the agent or by the potential buyer. Um, and then I just, and then I leave and then I just ask them to text me when they're done and I'll just wait around the corner and then I'll come back and, um, you know, uh, wipe everything down, all the switches, the door handles, and then I spray Lysol on all the handle sets, the toilet, et cetera, and then, um, and then lock it up and then leave. And leave. And so they're, they're looking at it alone, walking in and looking at it alone. Yeah. 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 Cause what, what we've seen, I know the other markets that we've looked at, um, I was looking at, you know, what was going on They I don't think the results are in yet for Italy, but like in China, they had quite a significant, like almost a 70% drop, but then it came right back up. It was a total V recovery. Um, and actually, uh, Washington and Seattle and those areas out there, they, they saw maybe a four, 30, 40% drop in, in because of the showings but as soon as people can get back out they all come back right well and the, the problem that we have in in our market um, that's probably the most extreme of, of any market in the country is um, we went into COVID-19 with very very little inventory um, in the uh, in the lower to kind of the mid price point mm -hmm. so luxury in our market is considered 750 or higher um, our average sales price is like right around 380, 390. Um, and, um, and we had, you know, less than a month of inventory, like 0.9. Um, wow. and so, so, uh, I don't know if you were on the call last week with Dr. Dotzer, um, that yes. was being interviewed by Jay Cooper, my broker. Um, but his prediction, which I'm in complete agreement with is, is the minute that people can go out and start looking again. Um, if you're in that lower price point or in that kind of sub $500,000 point, uh, price point, um, we will probably have, uh, continue to have an inventory shortage and it might even be worse. Um, nobody really knows, but um, people are, are, I think are going to stay put. Um, if they're thinking about selling, I think they're going to stay put for another couple of months just to see how this whole thing um, shakes out. Mm -hmm. But um, there will be a lot of people, unfortunately, that are in the uh, restaurant business um, and all of the other businesses that have been impacted. Um, all those people that are homeowners, 
unfortunately, most of them, um, you know, can't, can't sustain for two or three months. And um, I think that we'll see, um, there'll be some issues there. Um, you know, hopefully there's some additional funding that's going to be available for those people. But, you know, if you're living in a, you know, two hundred, two hundred fifty thousand dollar house, and you're only making, you know, thirty five thousand or forty thousand dollars a year living in Austin, Texas, um, you you can't make your house payment yeah. uh, for for forever. I mean, you yeah. just it's hard. Yeah, that's so sad. Well, and I did listen to that, and one of the things that really struck me, and I've been repeating it over and over again, is how Dr. Dotzer said if he was going to short something and I was going to ask him about that, he would short urban redevelopment. And I think he's referring more to like New York and the larger cities. What do you think? Do you think that's going to be true in Austin? You know, in East Austin specifically back in 08, 09, um, that was, it was just starting to kind of take hold and, and really, you know, be a, the cool place to live. Um, but the places that are the, the the quickest to rise are usually the ones the quickest to fall. Uh. Um, and, um, you know, it's very expensive there. I mean, you know, um, and you have a lot of inventory. Um, so I think anybody that, especially a builder or a developer that has multiple projects in that part of town, they need to be super careful and um, they need to be priced aggressively because there is, there's more inventory there than in most places um, just because of, of what's gone on there just in the last probably 10 years. Um, so it'll be interesting to see. Now, what about the UT students? So here's, you know, everyone is out of school. They can't have kids in school, obviously, because that's where all the germs are passed. Are there a lot of UT students in their apartments now in Austin? I think so. I mean, I'm talking to clients that have kids that, that are here. Um, and, um, you know, like one of the, the crews that I use to, to do make ready um, on vacant listings, um, you know, they're, they're still in their apartment. Um, they're paying rent if they can. Um, I know that um, quite a few landlords have been given, um, you know, they're, they're saying you can skip April, but, you know, we'll raise it a little bit, May, June, July, August, you know, um, mm -hmm. so raise the rent a little bit so it all still evens out. But um, I think it's, it, it's going to be more and more of a problem because there's a lot of people, students especially, that, um, you know, have waiter or waitressing type jobs and mm -hmm. they don't have that now. Um, so yeah, they're still going to school and they're doing the online classes, but um, I, I don't know what's going to happen with that. Um, they can't pay their rent forever. No, we'll they can't. Forever. They just don't have a source of income to do it. Yeah, yeah. That that is this really sad how it hit those you know th those businesses that really cater to all the young people you know earning their money and stuff. So you're, um, we're talking about the second homes. And of course we, you know, you and I've talked about the second homes too. So in your opinion is if you're looking for a second home, is this going to be a good time to pick one up? I think it is. Absolutely. Um, you know, I, I've been watching the hot sheet and, um, it's amazing to me at, um, you know, how many listings over $2 million, um, that, that we have in the market, um, or, or even just on the waterfront. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, you know, I think that we're going to start to see, you know, sell price reductions. I mean, I'm already seeing, them um, in these, you know, some of these different private groups that I'm in of listing agents that have these listings. Um, and it's, you know, lots of emails coming across motivated seller just reduced 400,000, 500,000, whatever it is. And that's on a, you know, like a $4 million lake house, um, mm -hmm. reducing it 500 grand. You know, that's, that's a lot, but is that enough to pull the trigger? I mean, how many buyers are in the market for that anyway? Right. right. Not a lot. Not, Not a lot. lot. No, and, that, it gets, that pyramid gets really tight at the top of that. Absolutely. Um, you know, if you're in Terrytown or Pemberton Heights, I mean, that's just a totally different story because, you know, there's very little inventory there, but, you know, still, I mean, I've got a $6 million buyer and a, and a, and a five to $7 million buyer, two different ones looking for pretty similar things. And um, I've, I've been able to find all kinds of things off market um, for them to potentially come and look at. 
Wow. Let me ask you this. Is this a good time if you're thinking about selling your home, but you're just a little bit skittish about this whole COVID process, is it a good time to keep your home as a hip pocket or would you just not, not put it on the market until things kind of smooth down? What I've do, what I'm doing is, is I'm, I'm doing photography. Um, we're doing uh, Matterport. Uh, we're doing iGuide, which is another type of, of, of product, a walkthrough product. Um, I'm doing all of that. The only thing that I'm doing as far as putting a house into MLS is if it's um, maybe like an estate situation or if it was a court ordered sale or um, a short sale. I have one of those right now that I'm doing in Westlake Hills. Um, so I, my suggestion is, is to keep it off the market um, until at least May the 8th. Um, which is when it's expected um, that the stay in place is going to lift in Austin. Um, but, and let's just wait and see, because I mean, we're still networking, we're still having sales meetings, mm -hmm. we're still, um, you know, uh, involved in these different, you know, off market groups that we have here in Austin. And, um, you know, uh, my advice is, is, is to, would be to wait if you can. If you can. Okay. Yeah. That's but still, thing. but still, you know, let me talk about it. Let's have a, a listing agreement. Let's mm -hmm. have photos. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's inevitable whether we shoot the photos now or we shoot them in, in three months. Um, shooting them now when everything is so green. It's uh, a good idea. And yeah. it's, it's a great idea because in three months it might not be green. Yeah. And then so. I think you kind of want to be, you probably want to have that property ready, like at the starting gate to like go right out and just Absolutely. get it ready. Yeah, because the minute, I really do believe that the minute that things, the shelter in place order lifts, mm -hmm. there are people out there, there, everybody is going stir crazy. Yeah. And um, if you're, especially if you're a serious buyer, um, and we have a lot of them in our market, and we don't have a lot of inventory, so you have to go out and look. Um, I'm personally not showing property uh, to any of my buyer clients that are, um, that are occupied listings. Mm -hmm. um, I'm actually, uh, I'm, I just, me personally, I'm just not doing it. Um, and most people don't, I don't think really want to do it um, because they don't want to take a risk of an occupied mm -hmm. house because you just don't know where that person's been. Right, right, yeah. Um, so. Well, in fact, here in Dallas, Robbie Briggs told me something interesting. He said, when you think about it, everyone's been in their house if they have even had a kernel of a thought of moving this much time, six weeks in your home, it'll be about six weeks, won't it, when we're all said and done, in your home, you're either going to say, I love this place, this is great, let's remodel it and stay here, or you're going to say, let's put it on the market and find something else. What do you think? Yeah, I, I completely agree, um, agree with that statement. And I think that um, uh, if, you're, if you're a seller in our market and you're staying in our market, I think those people are really having second thoughts about, are we going to move or not? We're just going to remodel mm -hmm. because um, you, you might be able to sell it for still sell it for a great price, but you know, the price is still expensive, you know, to buy something. Um, obviously if you're relocating for your job or if you have a job loss and you're selling your home and you're moving into a rental, it's kind of a different story. But um, you know, people that are selling, a million dollar house and that are going into a million dollar house. I, I, I think that those people are probably are having second thoughts about what do we, are we, do we really need to do this? Right. Right. Now we are so focused on our homes, which is another thing. Another reason why I think we're real estate. If as long as people can get financing, and as long as they have some income coming in, I mean, I think homes are going to remain not just important, but like top priority because We've, we've changed people's habits. We've, we've put them at home and they're going, oh my God, if this happens again and we have to stay at home again, which you know we're hearing it might happen again, it might be a thing for a couple of years. Don't you think that people are going to really focus on the home more than ever? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I, I know, I mean, I know lots of people that have been doing remodel projects or have started them in the last, you know, four or five weeks. Um, because, you know, construction crews are still considered, you know, essential or are considered essential. Um, and, you know, there's stuff going on. I mean, I walk out my street, I live in Crestview in Austin, and I walk out and there's probably four houses within one block 
that are all undergoing remodel, two of them just started in the last 30 days. Um, my next door neighbor has been doing a whole bunch of stuff to his house. And he told me, he said, I've been able to get some of the best pricing that I, I can get. Right. Um, cause there's uh, people that want to work. Yeah. Um, and so it's, it's interesting. It is. It's, it's really interesting how we are, uh, you know, really, uh, kind of forced into this and yet we're, we're making the best we can of it. And I do think that um, you're finding, you know, a lot of good pricing and before it was impossible to get a sub because everyone was so busy and crazy, at least in Dallas. I'm sure it was like that in Austin too, wasn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. And you know, there's a lot of people that don't, you know, there's people that don't want the, don't, don't want the worker in their house, but I I'm talking about, these are big remodels where no one, no one's know, home living in their home, yeah. nobody's home, yeah. uh, they've moved into an apartment or wherever, you know, wherever they've gone. Um, and um, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. People well, we are, want, we want to have you send us some of your listings, especially some of those, when you catch wind to some of those good vacation home properties, send them our way. We'd uh -huh. like to write about them. And the last thing I want to ask you is Dr. Dosser also said that he felt that the outer ring suburbs were going to really benefit from this as people are going to kind of spread out. Absolutely. Tell us your, tell us the best place in Austin that you think this is going to happen to. If I had, if I had an unlimited budget or had, you know, some extra cash and I wanted to invest, um, my, I would go, I would go towards, well, it depends. If I had, if I had just a couple hundred grand, I would go towards, um, Bastrop, Smithville, um, Smithville is going gangbusters. Um, uh, Lockhart is another market where there's a lot of people are investing in buying land. Um, you know, buying 20, 30 acres, splitting well, yeah, them up. Great barbecue there too, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, if, if I had an unlimited amount of budget, I would try to buy a ranch within an hour of Austin, like West or Northwest. Mm -hmm. So Blanco, Round Mountain, um, uh, Land Passes, um, kind of up in that area. Um, I've sold several properties up there in the last 12 months, um, where one of them specifically was 76 acres and they're going in and they're making it into a quote unquote like a little country subdivision um, and, you know, doing five acre tracks um, and set, having septic and having, um, you know, having, there's well water. Um, but I think people want this, they, they, they value the space and especially those that work from home. Yeah. You know, all they need to do is go to the airport if they, uh, if they need to drive a distance. And um, I think that uh, he nailed it right on the head is, is people really valuing the larger lot sizes. Um, and I think we'll see definitely more of that. Oh, I, I do too. I thought that was fascinating. And thank you again so much for inviting me to that. And thank you for joining us today. And we just yeah. look forward to keeping up with you and all your wonderful listings down in Austin. And, um, you know, I think that you guys are going to be busier than ever from influx of people from California and New York and Chicago and these other areas up north where the hotspots now. And almost everyone I talk to, I love Dallas, but almost everyone out of state I talk to says, there's one place I'll move in Texas, Austin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and there's, and, and there, there are some good opportunities. I mean, there, you just have to know them and you have to find them. And the, the good deals don't trade through the MLS. Um, you know, it, yeah. it's, a, it's a broker to broker deal within the office and, um, lots of off market, um, um, transactions take place here. Before That's why you have to have someone like you in your pocket as a good agent. Yeah. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. I, I actually, that's the part of the job that I really do like is, is the thrill of the hunt. Somebody comes to me and says, I want A, B, and C, and I only want to spend this much money. I'm like, you know, give me three or four days and let me come up with two or three. Um, I love that. Yeah. And we do a lot of it. A lot of that. Well, you have a great day. Stay thank safe. You. Thank you so and, much. Um, I appreciate you and candiesdirt.com. We love you. Thank you. Have, have a, a great good day. day. Bye-bye.